Well, Asus has listed down an Intel Xe DG1 GPU based discrete graphics card that comes with a passive cooling solution. The Asus DG1 is a low-end product that isn't even meant to be circulated within the mass consumer market, but given its nature, it's designed for a specific and niche segment as it's only supported on two whole motherboards. The ASUS DG1-4G features the Intel Xe LP graphics architecture and considering it's based on a cut-down configuration of an entry-tier GPU, it comes with a very low-budget design. Now, Intel Xe LP GPU architecture is incorporated on several products, including 11th Gen Tiger Lake Mobility, 11th Gen Rocket Lake Desktop, and the Iris Xe Max discrete GPUs. As for discrete graphics cards, the Xe LP GPU has been featured on the Xe SDV and a few discrete solutions that were spotted earlier this year. Now, as far as specifications go, the ASUS DG1-4G graphics cards, we're getting an Xe LP DG1 GPU with 80 EUs or 640 cores compared to the full 96 EUs or 768 cores that the chip has to offer. For memory, the card is configured with 4GB of LPDDR4 memory clocked at 4266MHz pin speeds. Now considering the GPU is an entry tier design, even LPDDR4 memory should be enough for the card's bandwidth requirements. It's also featuring PCIe Gen 3.0 on a by 4 interface. Now as for the design itself, the card comes with a single slot form factor and it features a blue PCB with no backplate. The front heatsink is simply a solid aluminum block that's slapped over the LPDDR4 memory and the Intel Xe LPDG1 GPU. As far as I.O., ASUS has configured the card with a single HDMI, DisplayPort, and DVI-D output. And the card does not require any external power source as it can be fed over the PCIe connector. As far as dimensions, the card comes in at 11 centimeters by 17.3 centimeters. Now the thing that's interesting about this card is the fact that the Intel Xe DG1 graphics card is only compatible with two motherboards from ASUS, the Prime H410M slash CSM and the Pro B460M-C slash CSM. Now both of these boards are also entry level designs and we can see that ASUS is definitely targeting a set of users with these cards. Meanwhile, Intel is planning to host a scavenger hunt based around its Xe H HPG graphics card, well the higher end discrete gaming graphics card anyway, on the 26th of March so we can expect proper XE HPG DG2 GPU information coming real soon. Now just as an aside and something that I found interesting here is I'll wrap up the review on this here Razer Book screens off on there but the Razer Book 13 it's got the i7 1165G7 in there with the XE graphics and I played some of the most popular games on Steam, being of course Counter-Strike Global Offensive, but again, everybody knows that'll run on a potato, runs really well over there, a little bit of stuttering here and there, so definitely has some work to do on the driver side of things. Dota 2 ran very well at 1920 by 1080, and Valheim stayed well over 30 FPS, as long as you kept the settings at medium or lower at 1080p. So really need to see how far these XE graphics have come along from what Intel used to offer because honestly, if I'd said 1080p on a laptop with integrated graphics with Intel, you would have laughed and I would have too because it would have been impossible. Love to hear your thoughts on this one down in the comment section below. All right, guys, I want to thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you liked what you saw here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there. Hit the bell notification so that we don't miss you in the future. And if you want to catch out something you may have missed, hit up the links over here on this side. And we'll catch you in the next one.